balancing and classifying chemical reactions. A chemical reaction can be represented by a chemical equation. In a chemical equation, the starting substances, the reactants, are written on the left side of the arrow, and the new substances, your products, are written on the right side of the arrow. You can write two types of equations. You can write a word equation, like nitrogen monoxide plus oxygen forms nitrogen dioxide, or you can write a chemical equation which shows these symbols, like NO plus O2 forms NO2. We have to balance chemical equations because the law of conservation of mass states that atoms cannot be created nor destroyed in a chemical reaction. So we have to balance these reactions. Let's look at this first example, C6H14 plus O4, O4 plus oxygen. Try to balance it. The first thing I'm going to do is balance the carbon. I'll start on the left side. There's six over here, so I need a six there to balance the carbon. Next, look at the next atom, 14 H's. So go over to the right side, the products, we'll balance the hydrogen by placing a seven there. Now we're gonna look at oxygen. Now there's an even number of oxygen on the left side, and on the right side there's 12 plus seven. That's an odd number. The way to get around that is double every coefficient that I have. So we'll put a two in front of C6H14O4, I'll leave oxygen for right now. On the product side, I'm going to make that 12 CO2 and 14 water. Now the carbon and the hydrogen are still balanced. Now I can look at the oxygen. There's 24 here for oxygen and there's 14 here. That's a total of 38. I already have 8 in the C6H14O4, so I need 30 more. So that means that coefficient has to be 15. So my coefficients in the balanced equation, 2, 15, 12, and 14, and it now obeys the law of conservation of mass. We can indicate the state of matter for the reactants and products by putting a symbol after the compound. Gas is G, liquid L, solid S, and then AQ, stands for aqueous, is anything dissolved in water would be aqueous. If a compound is aqueous, it consists of ions, and when these compounds are dissolved in water, the ions become dissociated from one another. So let's look at this example here. I'm gonna write the ionic equation. If anything is aqueous, I simply break it apart into ions. So AgNO3 is aqueous, it breaks apart into Ag plus and NO3 minus. Every compound has one positive ion and one negative ion. NaCl is aqueous. We're gonna split it apart into its ions, Na plus and Cl minus. On the product side, AgCl is a solid. We don't do anything to solids, liquids, or gases. They stay together. NaNO3 is aqueous. We're gonna split it apart into its ions. So this is the ionic equation the spectator ions are those ions that do not change from side to side. Na is aqueous on both sides, as is NO3. Those are spectator ions. Those are not involved in the actual reaction. The net ionic equation shows what's left after we get rid of the spectators. In this case, the net shows the formation of the solid, which is silver chloride. So that is the net ionic equation. When we balance net ionic equations, you have to balance charges as well as the atoms. So let me rewrite this example here. I'm not worrying about the states of matter too much, but we're gonna balance the bismuth, so we'll put a two in front of the BI, that will balance the bismuth. Next, we're gonna balance the sulfur. So let's look at sulfur, balance the S's, and then we'll balance the hydrogen. So now, the atoms are balanced in this net ionic equation. The charges should, should be balanced as well. There's two BI's with the three plus charge. That's six plus on this side because H2S doesn't have a charge, it's neutral. On the product side, Bi2S3 is neutral, there's no charge, and there's six H pluses, so there's a six plus charge total on the 
product side as well. So the charges on both sides are six plus. And that should always occur when you balance a net ionic equation. They should be the same on both sides. We can indicate reaction conditions above or below the arrow. The triangle means heat. So in a decomposition reaction like this one, it often requires heat for it to occur. Or you, if you add a catalyst, that would also appear above the arrow. Here are the five main types of chemical reactions. First one, combination. Combination is just taking two or more substances and producing one product. The simplest type of combination is where you take two elements, like H2 and O2, and they form a product based on the most common oxidation states, hydrogen being a plus one and oxygen being a minus two, so it forms H2O. So combination, you get one product. Decomposition, the second type, you're taking one substance and you're breaking it down into two or more substances. The simplest type of decomposition is where you take a binary compound like HGO and you break it down into the elements that make it up, mercury and oxygen. So decomposition is exactly opposite of the combination. Third type are single replacement. You're taking an atom or an ion in a compound and you're replacing it by an atom or an ion of another element. There's different types of single replacement. You can have hydrogen replacement where a metal replaces hydrogen. They switch places. Now metals are positive and hydrogen's positive. That's why they switch. They don't combine together. They switch with, with each other. There is metal displacement where, for example, copper, which is positive, switches with silver, which is positive. So the positives, again, switch. Or you can have halogen displacement. Now halogens, when they're combined with something, take on a negative charge. So like Cl, when it's combined with something, will be negative, And Br is negative, so those can switch with each other. The negatives, in this case, will switch. But all single replacements have a compound plus an element. And your products are a compound and an element. Fourth type is metathesis or double replacement. These are reactions in where you have two compounds and the positives switch with, with each other. So for example, silver nitrate plus NaCl. Silver's positive, Na is positive. So the positives switch, switch with each other. So you get silver chloride, which is a solid, and sodium nitrate. The big driver with these double replacements is the formation usually of a precipitate or a solid. And then the fifth type, neutralization, is just like a double replacement, except these are a special type of double replacement, acid plus base. But again, you have your positives like HCl's hydrogen's positive, NaOH, Na's positive, the H and the Na switch, and so you get water and you get a salt. So neutralization is a special type of double replacement.